These are not dinosaurs, my friends. I hope this is getting to be obvious, but we'll, we have more things for you. So that makes the wings go up and down. So the bones of a bird and the muscles of a bird and the way the bird moves its limbs to fly is unique to birds. But if you want to see something unique, you ought to look at the way a bird breathes. As I mentioned before, birds have been hit by jet aircraft at 37,000 feet where there's not a lot of air. And that's thanks to the most efficient respiratory system in all vertebrates. The lungs are not particularly large. Uh, they make up uh, only about 2% of the body volume, which is really pretty small for a vertebrate, and yet they have such efficient breathing. And uh, part of it is because in the bird, air doesn't go into the lung and then back out the same way it came in. We call that tidal breathing. You only get the oxygen when the air comes in. When the dead air goes out, you don't. With birds, they oxygenate the blood when the air comes in and when the air goes out. It's an amazing system. It involves a bunch of air sacs. You can see them shown in the picture here. Uh, there are two big abdominal air sacs right here. And then there's two thoracic air sacs on each side. And then there's an interclavicular air sac between the two clavicles. And notice these air sacs go out into the bones. This is a terrible experiment. I'm reluctant to even mention it. But people have actually shown that you can close off the trachea of a bird, lop off a wing, and it can breathe through the air going into its wing. I know, not a very pleasant experiment, but I guess I'm glad somebody did it once. Uh, how does it work inside the lung? Well, the air comes down the trachea, goes into the two bronchi. There are two lungs, a left and a right one. And inside, we have something totally different from any lung on any creature. Birds do not have a diaphragm. Can you imagine trying to breathe without this dome muscle that goes up and down uh, to bring air in? Birds have no diaphragm. They have a fixed lung volume. The lung doesn't get bigger and smaller. As a result, birds don't have that lubricated double-walled sac called the pleural sac around their lungs. They don't have one. Birds technically do not have alveoli, the little gas exchange sacs that the air goes in. Instead, they have a totally unique structure called parabronchi. Uh, it's a flow-through air system. The flow through the lung is continuous. The flow is unidirectional, so it's not going in and out the same part of the respiratory part of the lungs. And it involves all these air sacs. By the way, we also have air sacs going out into the neck. If you've seen birds that can puff up their neck during courtship, it's these cervical air sacs. Somebody has called birds a bag of wind. They have all these air sacs. And of course, I've been called that too, but that's another issue. This is the way the lung, it, it's hard to follow this, it's very complicated, but suffice it to say, we're showing you two of the air sacs, and in the middle here is where we have these parabronchi. This is inside the lung. So as air goes through the lung and through these parabronchi, gas exchange is occurring along the side of the tube. The air goes into a sac and then comes back through the lung again, but a different tube, and so it can get oxygen going in and coming out. Uh, so. Uh, this is the path of air during inhaling, going through the parabronchi. It just shows it going through one, but it would be going through all those parabronchi shown there. And then on exhaling, the sacs would contract, sort of like bellows, and the air goes back out through again. And what contracts the sacs? Really the muscles that are in the body. These air sacs are sandwiched between all of the uh, muscles. Uh, the sternum of the bird is capable of sternal pumping that can pump the abdominal air sac. And uh, this whole system works so well, uh, there's no creature that can breathe like a bird. It even has a special hemoglobin. So another thing, since you brought up Allosaurus, another of the uh, unique anatomical features that he brought up was avian respiration with the air sacs and everything, which we've now found on Allosaurus and Archaeopteryx and, uh, well, he, he accepts Archaeopteryx as a bird, so it wouldn't matter, but, but a, a number of large theropods like, like the T-Rex and the Allosaurus, we found those air sacs. So 
where is his argument there? He probably said, well, wait, I've butchered chickens. I've never seen these air sacs you're telling me about. Well, if before you kill a chicken, you were to fill these air sacs with a dye in the form of a gel it sets up, you would see them because otherwise they just collapse and look like fascia on the muscle. Here's a deceased chicken, and you can see the nice femur, which is inside the body here. Uh, you can see the keel. You can see the sacrum up here. Here's the wishbone right here. But look at the air sacs. First in the left and the neck, those are the cervical air sacs. Then we uh, go to the intraclavicular air sacs that open up out into the arms of the bird or the humerus. And then the uh, thoracic air sacs, two on each side of the lung. And finally, the really big two abdominal air sacs in the abdominal area. A good reason to keep the pubic bones and everything well out of the way for this air sac system. So uh, this is one of the reasons ducks float so well in water. Not only uh, uh, do they uh, have waterproof feathers, but uh, they have these air sacs inside. The lung itself is shown here in yellow, item six. And as I say, it's, it's relatively small for a creature this size and yet so efficient. Well, suffice to say, nothing breathes like a bird. <laughs> There is no respiratory system in any dinosaur that we know of that is truly avian. Yeah, I, I really like the fact that he specifically said nothing breathes like a bird. And he said there is no respiratory system in any dinosaur that we know of that's truly avian. And it's like, now you're either being dishonest there or you're naive and you know haven't done sufficient research. Because what we're talking about here is what's called pneumaticity, the fact that uh, birds don't just have a, a tidal breathing system like we have. Basically, our, our lungs, you know, they're like inflatable balloons on the end of a straw. Air goes in, air goes out. Birds instead have this this uh, unidirectional system, which is very difficult for us to um, understand. It's also quite difficult to explain. But basically, the lungs are small and stiff. The lungs are connected to a series of bellows like air sacs distributed throughout the body. Um, air passes through the lungs and it also passes into these air sacs. And then uh, the um, air in the air sacs is then passed through the lungs again on its way out. And um, so there's respiratory uh, action happening both on the breathing in and the breathing out. And there's this air circulating constantly. Now, in modern birds, Everything I've just described there pertains to what's in the, the soft tissues, but so you know the the air sacs are distributed throughout the soft tissues, you know, throughout the, the organ, the main organ of the body. But there are also numerous air sacs distributed throughout the skeleton. They're also part of this system. So there are small tubes that are connected to additional air sacs, and where these tubes enter the skeleton, they leave distinctive holes called pneumatic foramina. And there's nothing like pneumatic foramina. There's nothing else that, you know, bite marks left on bones um, or, you know, erosional artifacts. There's nothing that looks like these pneumatic structures. They're, they're unique. They're very detailed. You know what they look like on the outside of the bone. You know what they look like on the inside of the bone as well. Lots of work has now been done on working out exactly what they look like. And throughout... A, not all dinosaurs, but throughout the dinosaur family tree, there's evidence for this pneumaticity all over the place. So you get outside of birds. Again, if you know, if we're regarding Archaeopteryx as a bird, get outside of the group that includes Archaeopteryx and all other birds. Look at other theropods. It's present throughout virtually all other theropods. There's a couple of really primitive ones from the Triassic that might not have this system. It's also present throughout the sauropods, and their relatives, again, there's a couple of exceptions that might not have it. And then even elsewhere, outside of dinosaurs, pterosaurs, which are cousins of dinosaurs, they're the flying reptiles of the Mesozoic, they have it as well. And other members of this huge group of reptiles called archosaurs, they have it as well. In fact, it might have evolved really early on in archosaurs. Archosaurs, the group of reptiles that includes dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and also crocodiles and all of their relatives. So we, we think division. we have a division within the, the just for just for the audience. There's a the reptiles have divided. So like on the side, you have lizards 
and snakes and tuatara. And then on the archosaur side, you have the crocodilians, which also includes a whole lot more species than most people are aware of. Some that looked superficially like dinosaurs because they walked around on two legs, but they were like croc two-legged crocodiles and other things like that. And then we have the avametatarsalians, which are the, the, the super hyper advanced ones that had, uh, the, apparently they had this avian respiration system, which led to an enormous size because they process oxygen so efficiently uh, and, and, and had vastly more energy. So that was the, the dinosaur respiration, which birds inherited, gave, made them pound for pound more powerful and, and more had a longer, greater athletes, just in summary, than any mammal. Very, very nice summary. Absolutely. Yes. So, and we think that pneumatisty, skeletal pneumatisty, and therefore soft tissue pneumatisty in general was widespread across, across archosaurs. So for him to say that um, this air sac system is only present in birds, no, that is flatly contradicted by the skeletal evidence. And it's also contradicted by some soft tissue evidence because there are a couple of fossils where we think we actually have the air sacs preserved. Now, you know, getting organs preserved in a, a 100 million year old dinosaur fossil is, you know, a, a rare thing, of course. There's only a handful of examples. But there's a Brazilian dinosaur called Mariscia that does appear to have an air sac actually preserved. Um, within part of its uh, pelvis, also has a bit of the, the gut as well. So we've got direct evidence uh, for that. So we, so far as we can tell, we think that the bird-like breathing system was widespread, certainly across dinosaurs, probably in pterosaurs as well. So they, yeah, they would have had the same breathing system as birds. Doesn't mean doesn't mean it would have been exactly the same as that of living birds, but it certainly would have approached that condition more like that of, of any other animal.